What is up, Night Runners? It is I, your wheel man, Alex Cornut. I'm here today with 10 tips, tricks, cool things, Easter eggs, all in Night Runners. I had covered a lot of these in my long form video, but I've got a couple of new ones for you guys. And this is stuff that is easy to miss, super cool, and they're just great additions to the game that really show the passion and the love that the developer has put into it for us. And so I wanna show you guys all of those. I'm gonna start out with my very favorite one. We discovered this on stream the other night and I'm gonna walk you guys through it. So you start out in the garage, you start upstairs, and the best Easter egg that I have found thus far in this game is right here. And it's this pizza box. That is Gallo's Pizza. For those of you that maybe don't know the reference or don't remember... Could you tell me right quick what would be a better motor for my Skyline, a Gallo 12 or a Gallo 24? Uh, Gallo 12. I didn't know pizza places made motors. Shout out to Paul Walker. May he rest in peace. Uh, awesome, awesome shout out to Fast and the Furious or Too Fast, Too Furious. It just a sick reference and I, I love that, I love that. So we out here. That's in there, and there's a Gallo's Pizza Cup there, and also, in addition to that, right there on the ground is a copy of Midnight Club 3 Dub Edition Remix and Need for Speed Underground 2. So, pretty sick, pretty sweet. They're out of focus, you really can't tell, but they're down there. And then around the garage, there's also a couple other things. So we have J-E-M, Injizen, and then we've got uh, Pride, <laughs> and then Greddy, only it's G-R-E-A-D-Y instead of G-R-E-D-D-Y. And Pride's awesome. Instead of Pride, it should be Bride, like the racing set I've got behind me there. So it's just cool. They got some neat brands kind of tucked around there. And then there's a couple more of those Gallo uh, pizza cups there. So we'll call that two uh, really neat little Easter egg little features. Let's move on to a few more. We'll start out with the car before we even leave the garage. Some of the customization options you can get. A little Easter egg, a little thing that you can do that maybe not everybody is aware of. You can remove your hood after you put it on the car. So once you take it off the car, you can drive with it off. You can actually take off the front fenders as well. What I wanna show you guys though is one little detail when we do this. You'll see that the weight of the vehicle at this main screen, it, there's different weights kind of depending on what screen you're in, which is a little weird. I think that's a nuance that the developer will get fixed for us. But you'll see that we're 922, 948 kilograms, okay? That's because of, I've got max weight reduction, everything's off the car, everything's good. Here it shows a weight of 983. So when we go in and we take off the hood and then we put the hood on the shelf, which is where all good hoods belong, you can take off the front bumper, you can take off the fenders, you can do all of that, but we'll just do the hood for now. So now that we've taken that off, we go back to the main screen, it'll save that. Our weight has gone up to 1,008 kilograms. It's kind of weird. It's like by removing the hood, it defaults to the regular value of if you had a stock heavy hood on there. And then you'll see that our weight now is uh, 973, but it was 83 earlier. So did we add weight by removing the hood or did we save weight by removing the hood? That's a developer thing, a little bug, and I'm sure that he'll get that resolved at one point or another. That's way down the list. But I thought it was something really cool that you can just take off the hood, the fenders, the bumpers, and you can roll around that way if you want. So keep that in mind. That's a sweet little detail. We move along. The next super cool thing is the nitrous and how it functions in the car. So when we go into the engine, right now I've got a big two shot bottle of NOS in there. It's 175 horsepower for two shots, banger, or 150, no I think, um, yeah I think 150 shot and you get two of them. The nitrous bottle location is to the left of the driver's seat, okay? Keep that in mind. As we go through and we change the location of the nitrous, oh, hold on, storage, I need to go to storage. I apologize. As we go through and we change the nitrous that's on there, if I go to the DIY low power nitro and I wanna put it on there, now it's in the box. Big shots there on the side. We're gonna put this in. You have to install it like kind of twice once you 
I'm holding the street high power nitrous. Once I back out of the screen, you'll see that the nitrous bottle changes and the DIY kit is sitting behind the seat. But in reality, it's like, it's, it's kind of backwards. So I'm gonna install the DIY kit and when I back out of the screen, you'll see it sitting behind the driver's seat. It's kind of just a little detail right now. So our car is now back up to 1,008 kilograms, but it, it's not because the hood's removed. So you'll see that our nitrous is now tucked behind the seat. That's pretty cool. If we wanna change those nitrous parts again, and we go with maybe a different nitro kit, we can grab the street low performance. It's the, that's what we have on there right now. We'll grab the low pro uh, 75 horsepower for four shots. When we put that in there, it's gonna change the location from the DIY kit, which is behind, to, it puts it right in the middle of the uh, center console there. So the nitrous bottle changes the location based on what kit you put in the car. That's a really neat little thing. So we've got that installed as soon as we back out of the screen, install street low power, so I wanna make sure it's actually in the car. Um, back out over here, leave this screen. Now you'll see that that particular nitrous bottle is in the center of the car. If you are walking around and you're gonna race a rival and you're peeking in their car, based on the location of that nitrous bottle is gonna tell you what kind of kit they got on the car. Might tell you what you're running up against. Kind of a cool little detail. Here's another glossed over detail that I don't think a lot of people are aware of. When you go to customize and you go to engine, after you select the engine and you walk up to the car, the right bumper, or R1 if you're on a PlayStation controller, now gives you the opportunity to change the blow-off valve. If you press the X button or box on a PlayStation controller, you can cycle through all the different blow-off sounds. I'm gonna try number four, I think it sounds pretty cool. Six is a little different. It defaults at zero, so there's seven different ones to choose from pretty tight, not super easy to find in the menu, so you kinda gotta know where you're going to find that. So be aware of that, you guys, that is something that's tucked away. Nitrous bottle location determines the kit. Different blow off valve sounds. You can take off the hood and the fenders. We're on our way, there's a lot of neat stuff here. Let me take the car out of the garage and show you a few more. We're here outside of the garage. I've changed the music and the tones of the cars and stuff a little bit, like in the audio settings, so you guys can hear things a little better, so we can hear that blow-off valve. One of the really cool features of this game that I think mirrors real life in a great way is if you have aftermarket gauges, or even a more modern vehicle, if they're digital gauges to give you an analog reading, when you go to give them power, they cycle. They go all the way up and then all the way back and then return to their home state or whatever they're supposed to read. And so in this case, when you turn on the car, the gauges do the same thing. Check the right-hand side. It's so tight, it's so cool. The cars in real life do that, and so the fact that we can do it in the game is just a nice, sweet attention to detail. So we've got that knocked out. Here's another really cool attention Easter egg, just piece of love that has been put in the game. Headlights are off. Headlights are on and they pop up every time you turn them on and off. And they actually kind of rest in their home position. Right behind you can kind of see, I have installed a, a bumper that doesn't have uh, the fog lights. So you can kind of see the headlight housing back there. It's just really cool that that's how they work. And if you're in a, like a cut scene, where you're racing the guy for money or you're at the start screen and stuff and you blink the lights, you, they're just sitting there flapping and I, I love that. I've got the sleepy eye lights on it right now so they're only about halfway up but if you get the full pop-up ones, they do that. But if you go with like a stagnant light, they just blink on and off so obviously that would be the case. Another thing I want you guys to take note of right now. My fuel level. We're at pretty much full tank of gas. Okay, cool. Also take a look at my temperature gauges. There's three of them, plus there's some lights I want to identify as well. So our top right gauge, the very top gauge you see, that is our oil temperature gauge. It's pretty low right now. The next one is to the left of the tachometer or the RPM gauge, that's our water temperature gauge. Pretty low right now. And then we've got our main normal temperature gauge, which is just between C and H. 
Uh, and we're down towards the sea right now. As I drive and use nitro, because I've got this car max power, every part on it that I can put on it, it will overheat just by driving it. And if I hit it with nitro, we're going to send it right to the moon, and I'm going to show you guys that. And then the car doesn't perform nearly as good once you overheat it. So if you ever run into a low power state and you don't know what's going on, check your temps. That's the thing. So those are cool Easter eggs, right? Like we've got the gauge cycling, we've got the headlights, walking you through kind of the temp things, and the fuel. Look at the mileage on the speedometer. It reads 143931. So 143,931 kilometers. Let's drive to the parking garage. Keep an eye on my tent. Another thing that I've touched on in the other videos, which is another cool detail. This car stock red lines at about 7,400 RPMs. Once you upgrade everything, it redlines a lot higher in the RPM range. Um, we all slow down or speed up, I guess, in this case. Uh, it goes all the way to about 8,900. Look at my temps. You'll see they're starting to climb. We're about halfway through the bar just by driving down the road a little bit. And now we're topping out fourth gear. It's bouncing right around 88, 8,900 RPM. We'll click into fifth. Let me hit the NOS real quick here. Just by hitting the nitro that one time, our gauge is shot to the high end of the gauge for sure. We'll hit him again. Now we're overheating the car. You'll see that we've got a, a water temp gauge on the RPM that's red. We've got a red light down on the regular uh, temperature gauge. And then our water and our oil temps are all the way up. And they're slowly starting to come down because we're at rest. Now the lights have gone off because we're not overheating the car anymore. During that time when everything's super hot, you just don't have the performance you normally would. So that's kind of a cool thing. Also, on our drive here, our mileage or kilometer, our, <laughs> our odometer is reading 143934. That counts up all the time you drive the car. And so it's a super, super neat feature. I hope that when the full release comes out, you can buy a brand new car because I want to keep track of my wins in it and I also want to keep track of the mileage that I get. So now that we've covered all those little cool details that I think is just awesome, here's another one. You'll see that we've got about three quarter tanks of gas and we've used a little bit of our nitrous kit. It's out. You'll see that I'm trying to spray it and it's kind of just blinking there all empty. You can refuel your car. When you pause, you can go right down one to refuel. You can pick two different gasoline types. You can do 84 octane or 87. I haven't tested to see the difference between the two. And then uh, the big expense is actually topping up your nitro. And so we'll spend 95,000 yen and we'll give our car full gas, full nitro. You need to do this before you go race so that way you're topped up and you'll see that our fuel gauge is all the way full. Pretty cool. I really like that. It's just a nice detail. I'll show you one more. Well, we've run out of night. So we didn't race tonight. We didn't do anything. This final screen right here is typically just the hood of the car, but because our hood's removed, we get to see the engine. Our night rating is an F because I literally did nothing other than customize the car and try to show you guys the nuances. But I will do one race because I want you guys to see one more thing that I uncovered recently that maybe some of you guys weren't aware of. I've loaded into a drag race here with Kiko. You can negotiate a lot of the challenges. So when it, they send you an offer and it says accept offer or reject, you can reject the offer in some cases and then up how much money you want to get. So this guy was originally at like 940 grand. And so I upped him up to a million. So that way we just make a little more money on the deal. You can make your headlights pop while you're in the cutscenes. I think that's really cool. Let me show you how to do a good burnout as well because this is a technique I just recently kind of started figuring out. You roll forward just a little bit and then you hit the brakes and then you pull the throttle there and that'll bring up your RPMs. I only got to 70 Celsius. You can get all the way to 90 and so you don't want to just hold the brake and hold the gas because that doesn't work. And if you just hold the gas, that doesn't work. And if you get off screen, that doesn't really work. Like there's a certain 
nuance to it that's a little bit of a learned skill, but once you get it, it makes uh, quality of life a lot better. I'm going to bring up the map here and see if I can figure out where to go on this drag race. Yeah, if I would have been in the other lane without it telling us any of that stuff, we absolutely would have went the wrong way. I'm gonna hit the NOS really quick just so you guys can see something. So we're gonna heat up the car here indefinitely. Like we're pretty much I hit the nitrous again at the end there. Your heat carries over from one drag race to the next. And so when we roll up to this, my car is gonna be hot. It's like it just takes the current state of your car and then brings you back to the next drag race. And so be aware of that, you guys. If your car's pretty hot, you want to do your little your burnout here. There we go. Got a good one. Got it up to 90C. And that was me just rolling forward, holding the brake, and then pulsing the throttle. I'm going to run this one, but the car's going to be hot. But I'll show you. I'll heat up the car again. It probably just finished the race hot. You can sit at this screen for a long time and you can actually cool your car just by sitting here waiting on them before you flash your lights. So you'll see that um, our temperature gauge is like almost at the age. We're already pretty high up in the overall like oil, water temp, everything temp. And so just be aware of that while you're racing around you guys. If you are in a situation where your car is susceptible to heat, you can definitely heat it. And then you'll carry that heat in the next race. I'll use the nitrous again. We're flying, dude. Yo, okay. So, our car, I saw the red lights on. It was already overheated. It's going to be at the top end. Oh, I guess we've just won this race, so it won't be there. But when we get out of this cutscene, uh, I'll show you. Now, here's another thing I want you guys to see. We can pop the headlights. I've joined a team. By joining a team, the rep at that parking garage stays the same, but there's a new thing that I didn't know about. I was just a freelance racer. I was just beating up every team, whatever, and then I was getting a cycle of the same teams. As you, once you join a team, you then are earning respect for your team that you're on, your crew. I'm on G Company. We're in rank 20th. We just took some rep right off of Endless Appeal. They are in rank 19. And so I believe once I get them down to nothing, we will then take rank 19 and then we'll be going after the big body boys. This has got like blacklist rating system kind of deal. And I didn't know anything about this until last night. And I was like, dude, that just changed the gameplay loop for me. I was just going and beating up bosses, but now I'm like, I need to see how far I can push this in the prologue. How many teams do they already have set up and how much harder does it get as we go? So that's a really cool thing. That's going to be kind of the finale because I think this is a screen that a lot of people haven't seen yet, especially if you've been watching my content because I hadn't seen it yet. There's more than 10 things I've showed you, but there's definitely 10 big ones. And so I am thankful to all you guys for watching the channel. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you saw something new. And uh, you guys will enjoy this game as much as I do. It is only on PC. The only way to play the game right now is to subscribe to the Night Runners developer Patreon. And then you can get a copy of the game there and get access to the prologue. My understanding is that multiplayer is going to be coming to the game eventually. They're going to be adding like the mountain runs, chasing other cars. They're going to be adding drifting to it. They, him, the developer, he's planning to do that. There's a Kickstarter campaign that's going to be coming out for this game. Based on how well that Kickstarter goes, will probably determine a lot of kind of the release cycle of what stuff is going to happen there. Money cushions the blow in a lot of ways, I'm sure. So if you guys are interested, definitely support that. And in addition to all of that, my understanding is once the PC release is up and functioning and they're happy with it, it's going to be coming to console. And so this is a lot of hearsay. This is just what I've heard from other people that have kind of been following the developer and doing things. But 
I trust most of everything that I've been told, so it seems to be pretty legit. And if you, the developer out there, are watching these videos, let me work with you. I'd love it. Uh, obviously, I'm a fan of the game, so toss me a bone and I'll, uh, I'll toss lots of content out there for people to see. Outside of that, the rest of you guys, slap a like on the video if you haven't already so others will find it. I'm thankful to you. Everybody have a great rest of your day. See you next time. Bye-bye.